Everybody has their own agenda. My point of view, I want games to take over the world. That's my agenda. I think games are the, the most powerful, most important medium ever created by man. The, the merging of entertainment and software together to make something unstoppable. Today, when the game business is a $140 billion business worldwide, bigger than music, bigger than movies, bigger than TV, it's obvious. It wasn't obvious 40 years ago that this was gonna happen. The creation of Xbox isn't about a single memo or single idea when you get a group of motivated, smart people together, burning the midnight oil in the face of all sorts of odds to make the impossible possible. You can't do better than that. It wasn't enough for us to be successful in the marketplace. We wanted people to love us. And we wanted the industry to look at Xbox as something that was going to be worthy of the very best games. I was always feeling that I was on a journey with real-time pressure to find a place where I would fit in. You hear Miyamoto talk about when he was a kid exploring in the forest behind his house and he wanted to make games like that. He wanted to make that place. We created a device that enabled people to make environments and places where people like us could feel that safety, where people like us felt we belonged. And that's an awesome achievement of a generation. We made that place. How cool is that? We were on a journey to try to influence and get support for this crazy idea that we had around putting a DirectX-powered box in the living room to deliver Microsoft-powered interactive content. And the very beginnings of Xbox, when it was still called the Direct Xbox. For the first six months or so, it's about various groups of us driving around trying to crash meetings and get traction on this thing. Horace was horrified when he got the plans from engineering. It was this big rectangular board, and he's like, I'm supposed to design a console around this? What am I supposed to do with this? I remember the guys coming to me in the evening with this big motherboard from the 90s. The PC motherboard from the 90s was this gigantic board that had all these PCI slots on it. And I still remember the big graphic card that they brought over also as well and said, put this into something that is presentable on stage. And I still remember staring at it going, what now? What do I do with this thing? And you know, I thought, we gotta make it cool, we gotta make it super exciting. People gotta be able to tell in an instinct that this thing is called Xbox. What we were proposing would introduce a true wild card into Microsoft's entire business and its perception and its place in the industry. And that caused some fear and trepidation. The more passionate that the five of us are, the scarier it is to people who are senior. Up to a point, you go up through middle management, people who've done very well at Microsoft for a decade or so, who've become senior, it's scary to them to see people who are gonna mix things up. The only people who really got excited about it were the people who had operated the same way we were, but in 1980, the beginning of Microsoft, who had been saying things like, we can have the operating system and that'll control everything. They were passionate about it and they did it. They loved hearing about the way we were doing things. And fortunately for us, Bill was a part of that. So Bill could tolerate us in a way that the guys who worked just under Bill probably just dreaded having meetings with us. It didn't fit into their worldview, it didn't fit into their idea of what Microsoft was. At Microsoft at this time, you know, you could tell just driving into the office. You'd be driving in and three guys would pull in front of you in new Porsches and cut you off. You know, everybody had to have um, a Ferrari and they had to take two parking places. And it was because those guys had been there for 10 years and managed not to be fired. So they were millionaires. And this was the face of the people that we were trying to interface with. And it was depressing. We were an annoyance that, that, that you know, some of these people just didn't need or didn't feel they had time for.
I still remember the guys coming over the first night. You know, Seamus, you know, Otto, Ted, and, and Kevin came and said, you know, we have this idea to build a game console. And then they literally dropped this board and dropped this, these components on the table and said, you know, what would it be like if we did this and this and this? And can you sketch it for us? Can you help us kind of put the pen on paper? And I remember, you know, all I had was a green marker. All my other markers were all dried up at the time. I sketched things in black and green and ultimately that stuck. And, and everybody fell in love with it. Horace designed, he's like, dude, we need a metal X, and it's gotta have a green eye, you know, shooting a laser out. I want it to blind people. The idea was that there was this technology inside this big aluminum box that was busting at the scene, you know, almost like a nuclear reactor. So when you look through this portal, you see this, this intense energy that's inside. And we try to recreate that with, you know, we shopped around for a whole bunch of green laser pens at the time trying to make the light just this intense thing that will shoot across the stage and trying to make this thing as cool as possible, as capable as possible. Thank you, thank you, Bill. 
it just might appear that The Rock and Bill Gates don't have a heck of a lot in common. <laughs> well, The Rock's here to say that that can't be farther from the truth. The Xbox is everything The Rock is, cutting edge, powerful, exhilarating. I mean, The Rock doesn't impress easily, Bill, you know that, but I'm pretty damn impressed with what we're seeing here today. And considering that this Xbox at this moment is only running on one-fifth of the system's power, it's very impressive. Uh, Bill, do you have any idea what The Rock would be like if he were only running on one-fifth of his power? Well, I, I would think that... It doesn't that... matter what you think, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, Bill. It, it's, it's just a force of habit. Rock apologizes. <laughs>
On March 13, 2001, Microsoft put their commitment to developers on public display at their GameStock event in Seattle. Thanks and welcome to GameStock 2001. Um, what you're seeing is, is a sneak peek at what's to come on Xbox. We're going to start off with a game uh, whose vision was really just too big to fit in the PS2. So we brought it over to the Xbox. <laughs> Our characters certainly aren't the uh, muscle-bound superheroes, you know, that we want to be. They're more like the poor, sad schmucks that most of us really are. Dolphin was a real-time 3D rendered dolphin swimming around in water with ground terrain underneath it. And Dolphin was just enough to stress almost every part of the 3D pipeline of an early pre-release Xbox system. And if Dolphin doesn't work, it means something somewhere has failed. Either the software has regressed, maybe there's something wrong with the silicon, but having Dolphin not run was a sad thing to have happen. Well, with a design, I'm really trying to communicate what the team is trying to promise to the marketplace. You know, the future gaming experience. Well, what does that mean? Well, that means a lot of different things, but one of the fundamental things it means is the raw and sensor power that the technology can promise. Um, that now anything is possible inside the machine. You know, put your hand out in a natural posture, imagining that you'll be holding it in that shape for two hours. I don't think that you'll go like this. You'll go like this in a natural posture. Well, this is where the controller fits in. We worked with the city to open up the WWF restaurant across the street from Toys R Us Times Square. And that's where all the gamers came first. Bill wanted to be on site. He wanted to help hand over the first console. Everybody got a tag on their wrist. And when your color was called, we brought you across the street to Toys R Us. And Bill was there to hand out the very first Xbox. Tonight's kind of a celebration. Uh, it's after a lot of hard work. 10, 9, 8, 7. It was a magical night. Xbox Live is really different from anything else that's been done before. You're connecting people across the world to play games. And you know, everyone's trash talking when you're playing sports games. They're the most competitive things. Oh, I'm going to get inside your head when you're calling your plays. People always want that top spot. They always want their name and lights.
The Xbox Live Arcade, I think at the beginning, really was what became Xbox Live the storefront now. The plan was they would release games that were small because bandwidth was hard to get at the time. It was a lot slower at the time. So you had to make a game. I remember the game had to be 20 megs. And 20 megs is unfathomable now, but like 20 megs size, so your game has to fit in that. And I remember like, okay, well, if that's, that's going to happen, we're going to do these older games. So we did Robotron, Defender, Joust, Time Pilot, like these classic arcade games, those fit in 20 megs. And then Microsoft said, no, we're going to raise the limit to 50 megs. So we started making more complicated games. And while we're in the middle of doing that, they're like, oh, you can do 100 now. And then over that time, they ended up letting it go up to like multiple gigs of size. But for the initial launch, the concept was arcade games because people don't have the infrastructure to receive larger games. When Xbox Live Arcade was first coming on board, which was really on the original Xbox, it was like literally a disc product that you had to put in, um, I was working in, in, at an independent developer called Digital Eclipse, and we were contacted by Microsoft to start making games, uh, arcade games for Xbox Live Arcade. People wanted digital content, and they didn't want to have to go to the store to buy games, and if they could download it, if they could download these smaller experiences that were just easily digestible in, in a digital format, like, people wanted that, and that, 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 that was this whole market that was untapped, and Xbox Live Arcade was the first to really prove that out.